yes, it's finished football show. Thanks for joining us for another episode. And we're here today to look back at the final weekend of the Bakehouse Liga 2021 season. And it was a weekend full of drama. First played second as Coops hosted uh, Hoyiko Helsinki in, in a battle for the title, while third played fourth as Inter hosted Asiko in the bronze medal match. And what accommodating hosts they turned out to be as well. Um, this game also turned out to be a shootout for the top scorer prize with uh, Benjamin Chelman and Ariel Tuko Nguakam going toe to toe in this game and both finishing on 14 goals for the season. So there was lots to uh, lots to be excited about. I'm joined today by uh, Rich. Hi, Rich. Hi. By Keke. Hi, Keke. Hey. And by Mark H- Hayton. Hi, Mark. Hi. And we're going to review this final weekend's action. And I think it's fair to say that there were mixed emotions for the Finnish football show team. Um, but we'll come to that, Rich, shortly. Um, we also take a look at the uh, at the more recent action in the Fakehouse Liga Ukkonen playoff between Olu and Rops. But the referee blows his whistle, and I give myself a bit more editing work to do. And let's have a let's just have a little little look back at, at how things finished. So there were. For the for the Mesters Liga, the the sort of champions half of the table. Um, if you need an explanation for how the league splits, then go back to the previous full episode of the Finnish Football Show. We explained it all there. Um, the Wednesday twenty seventh, uh, Hoyiko played Hoyefko, Ilves played Inter, and Asiko played Kups. And I guess. The most significant results there were that Hoyi call one one nil, um, and Asi and Coops drew two all, which left things very tight going into the Sunday. Rich, would you like to uh, talk us through the results on the Sunday and uh, and how that was specifically for the Coops Hoyi call game? Yeah, well, um, we we knew when the league was split uh, and the fixtures were announced for the final five rounds of fixtures that. Um, Coops would host Hoiko on the, the final match round. And I think at that point, uh, when the league split, Coops had a very slight lead, I think maybe a point or, or goal difference over Hoiko. Um, Hoiko had been, I think at one point, 11 or 12 points clear in the championship during the summer before they hit their horrible run of form. And, uh, and Coops still unbeaten since the end of May, um, but they dropped points. I think they drew three out of their final five matches which meant that going into the final round, um, Hoiko only had to draw or win. Cups had to win the match. And um, yeah, Hoiko took an early lead through a middle ten hole was a, from a corner. Uh, Tanali Hammerlein and equalised for Cups shortly afterwards. And then after that, it was um, it was tense. I mean, he had a huge attendance. It was nearly 8,000 mm. at, the, at the arena, which is fantastic because... Yeah, uh, it's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it was Cups' biggest ever... At home attendance and I think it was the biggest Bakehouse Liga attendance of the season uh, as all the, the matches in Helsinki were affected by COVID and mm. lack of interest. Um, I think the week before Honka hosted a match where they had 237 paying souls. It's, it's, I think there's a lot of structural issues. Not It's not just Honka to be fair, but Honka are the kind of totem pole for that. But um it was a really tense game. I mean, um, the Cups goalkeeper, uh, Creedal, had a blinder. He was saving shot after shot after shot. Um, Hoyiko just, they, they knew, they just had to keep it as a draw. Um, and yeah, it was a really long, sort of eight or nine minutes of injury time at the end of the game as Cups poured forward and extra balls were thrown on the pitch and there was all sorts of shenanigans going on. And uh, yeah, Hoyiko, um Set, sealed the second consecutive title with a one-all draw, and uh, I mean, I'm not going to display any bias by suggesting they cheated, but at some point during the season they cheated, and yeah. They, do, yeah. do you have any evidence to back that up, or do we have to just don't need it. throw you don't some sour I'll, grapes? I'll, I'll frame them. I'll frame them. <laughs> um, no, it was to be fair. I mean, for the first half of the season, they were by far the best team, um, and then Coops 
I would say choked, but Cups dropped points when they needed to win uh, towards the end. And uh, it's a shame because this was probably the best title race I think we've had for quite some time. We've got two teams who are on this form, head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, and it was really, it was a really good end to the season. I think it's exactly what Vegas Liga needed. It's a shame it was kind of that late in the in the year, but it was, yeah, a good, a good advert for finish football. It was a shame that not many people got to see it because it wasn't shown on terrestrial TV like a lot of games were. Um, but Rutu claimed it was their highest viewing figures. But yeah, it was um, for for the league in general. It was a, a fantastic end, and it's a shame that someone had to win and it wasn't Coops. You say you say that Coops sort of choked at the end, and I, I mentioned something like that in a message to the group the other day. But you know, it was it was tongue in cheek because they they like you say after the first half of the season they kind of really powered through in the second half, and and that was married with what you call floundering uh, like a fish out of water. But um, to get to that final stage to be ahead um, going into those final couple of games, I thought was quite an achievement anyway. Yeah, um, so they hadn't, they hadn't lost since the end of May and they were winning as a habit, really. And it was only, yeah, at the end, when we look back now, they drew four out of the last six, including that final match, which just let Hoyiko get back into it. Um, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a shame because what Simo's done uh, in his year at the club, he already won the Swarman Cup at the start of the year and a double would have been nice. They had such a good run in Europe too. So it's a shame it didn't work out, but I think it just shows the strength that's there and it's nice to have someone you know Hoiko have been the dominant club on and off for so long they've had bad spells but hopefully this is the start of Cups raising the bar and hopefully some of the other clubs will join them but uh, that's to be discussed yeah well it is and and I was at that um Asiko Cups game the, the the second to last game that finished 2-2 and it was a right a right old ding dong I think that's fair fair to say it was a cracking game of football two teams playing well and possibly the 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 difference would have been having Urho Nisila on the pitch but he wasn't there that for that game and I was both disappointed and absolutely delighted because I I <laughs> talked about him over the last couple of years, having noticed him playing for Coops and we've seen him progress into the hooky yet. And I was ready, I was ready for, for the pain, really, to just to see him in action and he wasn't there. And then that made me think, oh, hang on. Maybe there's a chance. And and there was a chance, and it was a really uh, a really good game of football. You mentioned uh, the Coops goalkeeper, Creedle. Um <laughs> We've attracted this group of young exchange students to come and watch Asikor, and they've been standing with the Kloppit, and quite a few of them are, are German. And they spent the entire game uh, just mocking him in German, or certainly the entire second half while he was in front of us, just yelling all, all manner of stuff at him in German, just trying to distract him. But um, I have no idea what they were saying. I'm sure it wasn't... Uh, Offensive, but it was probably annoying, and uh, but not quite annoying enough. So uh, he managed to uh, he managed to earn earn a point with Coops, and uh, that meant going into the final game that Ashley Cor played Inter, and this was the this was the third third or oh, the bronze medal match, I suppose. And was I confident? I thought we had a chance, but as things as things were, because of yeah, I think goal difference and uh, whatever, it, it was looking like Ashley Core had to win and a draw would have been enough for Inter to, to take the third place. And Ashley Core just went powering ahead to a 3 0 lead. It was, it was quite something. They, they carried on actually playing well as they played on, on Wednesday against Coops and went in 3 0 up at half time. And I think we were all kind of dumbstruck really um then the second half started and within 20 minutes it was 3-2 and i think that was uh that was a little bit nerve-wracking i have to say and the final the final score was was 5-2 to ashikor but two of those goals came quite within the last sort of eight minutes or so so there was a really nervous uh 15 20 minute period where you know, you just don't quite trust until those until those goals 
go in, but we uh, it, it made the the long coach journey all all the more worthwhile. How good was Tuco though? <laughs> well, now uh, this is a bone of contention, magic. isn't it? <laughs> magic, it's a magic player. I, I I feel like he's been back for a couple of years, and I feel like. I've spent the best part of that couple of years moaning about how ineffectual he's been, how he seems to have really heavy boots and for a big man can't seem to get himself off the ground to win a header and run or, or run around very far. And then with, you know, within the last <laughs> six to eight weeks, he seems to realise his contract's up and uh, he's really got something to fight for. And he's been, his finishing has been excellent. His work rate has been better I keep my compliments to a, you know, to a minimum, and yeah, he's been he's he's scored a few headers as well, so it shows what I know. But the the funny thing was, we we're in the bus on the way home, and there must have been I don't know forty odd people there, and I think there were thirty nine of them that thought Tuchel should be given a new contract because he'd scored fourteen goals, and then there was me <laughs> saying, "You've all fallen for it. You've all fallen for the trick." We've been moaning all season, all of you. And I, I, I'll call them out. Dormus, you're one of them, if you're listening to this. And Julian and Billy, all of you. We've been moaning all season. And because he has this hot streak at the end, you've all fallen for it. Not me. Um, I mean, we, we were at a point where I think he scored, what were the numbers? 10 of the 14 goals came in the last six games. Yeah. That's a purple patch. It is a streak. And if you look at his goal scoring over recent years, it's like five years ago, he scored, was it 15 for Ilves? Then it's been like five, four, seven, now 14. I mean, I think he just needed a challenge. He's the opposite of a flat track bully because like those six games as well, they were all in the top half. They were on the championship round. So he's got against, he scores against big teams. Big game player. Someone did suggest that to get the best out of him, they should just give him a monthly rolling contract. Then he'd always be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. There, there has been, uh, there hasn't been an announcement yet. Mark, I just um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you had a, a cracking day out, and um, you know, and enjoyed your, enjoyed your away day. It's. Um, you know, when you go away like that, it's one of the, when you get a result, especially a, a convincing result like that, it's absolutely something else. It's, it's, the, it's the best. But I've got to say, I, I personally, I did feel a bit sorry for not only Inter Turku, but, but you know, uh, Timo Foro home, Vekas League, a legend, and, and Henrik Moisando, who, who hung up his boots and his gloves at the end of that game for... Um, for those guys to sort of have to bow out on the end of that kind of thrashing, it was um, it was a, yeah, it was tinged with a bit a bit of sadness for me because you know those those two guys especially, they've been they've been absolute sort of into Turku and Vakaus Liga sort of stalwarts. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, it was a bit of, bit of a bit of a, a shame for them, but I'm glad you uh, glad you and the boys had a good time. <laughs> Well, it's it's fair enough that you you give a bit of a little bit of balance. I've I've done my gloating now, Mark. I, oh yeah, I wouldn't worry too much because it wasn't. A, I wouldn't say that it was a thrashing. So it was three two going the last couple of minutes, and Inter just piled forward like with with an absolute reckless disregard for defending. <laughs> and Inter already don't have a strong defense, so they just. They, I mean, they in in a sense they went out how anyone would like to go out. Just yeah, mind, mind, mindlessly, blind, mindlessly charging forward, yeah. and, and they'd scored, for and they'd scored the goals. So they and they'd had a few chances. Well, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was nerve wracking. It wasn't an easy five two. It was a, it was deserved, but it was close right until yeah, like you say, the last, the last few minutes. So, but with um, those guys, with but, those two guys calling it a day, it's um, it'll be interesting to see how because Inter have been steadily, you know building and they've added some decent decent players to their ranks and you know like um, obviously we know Petri Forsell is there now he, he came back to Finland and, and joined them um, Benjamin Chalaman who was who was you know in and around the national team so I, I, I do hope they manage to to keep keep the pressure on it at the at the top end of the league there. But they've been losing some players too um, Jesper Engstrom has gone back to 
VPS who come up from mm. Ukenen and uh, Hoikov signed R2 Hoskinen, uh, the sort of central defender. So this is the it's that time of year. I mean, Hoikov basically signing everyone, aren't they? They signed Jona Toivio, um, mm. Perusori for next season. Um, they, they've been busy already. So um, Inter, have, they're going to have to go for a big sort of change. I think they almost lost Rick Ketting, the Dutch defender, during the season to, I think it was Toulouse. Um, he stayed. Hoikov was sniffing around him and then they're upsigning Honkin in, instead of a free. Um, so, yeah, Inter have got a lot of investment to put in. You, and you've got a new to manager think as, to find. Sorry. Mm, yeah, new manager. And you've got to think as well the way Ben Chalman's been playing. He should be looking he should be looking somewhere else than the Vekas Liga to go apply his trade. I know he's been sort of back and forth and hopping around again, but I think he's ready to give it a, a bit of a shot. But Timo Timo is great, like a great Vekas Liga player. And you know what did he, I think he 10, 10 caps for, for Finland, scored twice. So uh he'll be he was a good pro and he'll be greatly missed. I think the other thing is that back in the Hoyuko game, in one sense, it was quite fitting that it finished 1-1 because Hoyuko, I think they didn't actually plough a lot of goals this this season. They weren't that good uh, going forward, but they were very good defensively. So before Daniel O'Shaughnessy the jets off to, to pastures new, I think it was good for him to get another title under his belt, belt with a pretty decent defensive display under under tricky circumstances because I thought he was he was awesome against Coops. Mm. Yeah. What about in the Hasta Hastaya Liga, um, the the bottom half of the table? Uh, the the one thing I noticed was that that Haka seemed to pick up fourteen points. Is that, is that right? Forty or thirteen points from those final five <laughs> games, which is a, a decent run. Stunned yeah, silence. No one has anything no, no, to add. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. difficult. Yes, because you're right, Mark. That, that, oh, yeah. is, a, that is a good run. Um, we, we, doing, the, doing the maths. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that Lafty have finished where Lafty do, seven. Yeah. Albeit, you know, it's yeah. that weird thing where they've got more points than the teams in fifth and sixth. But um, it's, um, it's just a strange thing, this, because there was no European playoff this year, and normally the seventh place team would have gone into that. So Lati have basically been playing for nothing. Um, Haka mm. did well. Honka, again, just kind of drifted off to the end of the season. Although, strange thing that um, in their penultimate game, um, Darren Smith also scored four goals, which I think pretty much doubled his tally for the season. So he had two strikers scoring four goals in a match in the final week of the season. Um, Olu, we'll, we'll talk about shortly, they, they've stayed up from the playoff. And uh, Kotepe have gone down uh, 11 points. Absolute rubbish. Um, <laughs> they had three managers during the season. The third one has already left. They've had more and managers they, than wins. Yeah. Um, the yeah, the man, manager <laughs> who came in who saw them through the season, he's left and he's been replaced by Yussi Lepalati, who I think is like a analytical... I think he's... like. Does, he's a coach who does a lot on social media and stuff. Uh, he was at Yipot. Um, so he's basically, um, so he's taken over there and they've had some big thing about that. Basically the fans are going to choose their kind of playing style. They, they didn't like the fact that they were trying to play good football last year, which sent them down. So they're looking at going back to a bit of kick and rush and basics, which got them up. So uh, yeah, it was a um, odd end, but um, yeah, they've been replaced. Uh, the uh, Vepsu from Vasa are back. Um, they won the Ukan and it was a that was an interesting season as well because Rops led for most of the way. Uh, TPS did fairly well in the second half of the season, looked back, and then they both sort of dropped off. And, and Phipps, who just kind of snuck up and stole it, really. So, I mean, they deserved it, but it's um, came out of nowhere, really. Yeah, and, and some of the Ashley fans were quite happy to see Barza coming back into the Vakehouse League and uh, suggested that six points for next season. Already, uh, that's not the official view of the Finnish football show. That's just you know, representing the fans out there. Um, let's let's maybe come come back to the the Ukkonen table in a in a little while. Um, if no one's got anything else to say about the um, about the Bakehouse Liga and how that all finished, then let's have a little halftime break and let's just talk about the about the 
t-shirt store that we have because i've been i've been dreaming up a couple of the ideas for new shirts and uh, the start the designs that are there at the moment many of those will go we've got some new or we've got one new <clears throat> team in the Bakehouse Liga for 2022 so I'm going to come up with a, a new design that I can do in different colours so we can all follow our team in our colours um, so watch watch this space and also just keep an eye out on social media because at last weekend there was uh, you know we don't control the prices as we said before so so T Public um, does price promos and uh, they were down to like I think they're normally 17 euros and they were down to 11 euros so there are there are times where it's worth it just checking out checking out following us because we'll let you know when we notice and uh, and see if you can get a if you can get a cut price t-shirt and uh, it all goes towards helping helping the show yeah there's you know, a couple of bits of interest at the weekend i wore one at the uh, finnish school in london doing the cafe at the weekend and a couple <laughs> of people wondering what the hell was i wearing so, uh, <laughs> and I you had to explain them in there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They were available on sale this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and did, did anyone say why are you wearing a T-shirt with your own name on the front? Well, you know, you play for the name on the back, don't you normally? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, and, and also we've got the, the Buy Me A Coffee site. So it's buymeacoffee.com slash FFS podcast. Um, we've had a couple of donations recently, Rich, to, to, that we could say thank you for. Yeah, another generous donation from um, from Farid again, a long time follower of the uh, of the show. So uh, thank you, Farid. That's yeah. uh, paid for either a week's worth of Zoom or probably I think we'll we'll see if we can share half a pint between us next week. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. But is uh, every every little bit helps, and uh, we'll we'll come on to what's going on next week shortly. Um, Mark, while we're at half time, do we have any any onions this week? Um, <laughs> actually, I was we watched a match last week when I think it was last week actually or the week before when Futura Porvo were promoted to Kakkonen. Go on, get in, and um, cool, something came up which I hadn't thought about for ages. But you know, Kuustoist is sixteen. So Gorsdoist is the 18-yard box, but uh-huh. it's 16 because it's meters. So they call the like it's not like it doesn't happen that often, but like you, every now and again you'll say like some kind of Gordon Toist all the way in. So he's going into the 16-yard 16, 16 box, and you're like, no, hang on a minute, it's 16 <laughs> meter box. So it's not exactly an onion, an onion but 16 is 18. In no, it kind of it kind of it kind of is. I think no, I think that works quite nicely um and i need to improve i think i need to improve my basics as well as these onions i need to improve various parts of just the game on the pitch the basic kind of passing shooting and and positions on the pitch as well i'll give you i'll give you one right now just real super easy you could just repeat after me tuko on legenda (laughs) ah tuko on legenda (laughs) Okay, that's the end of the halftime break. We'll come into the second half. And we, we've sort of talked about this a little bit already um, in, the, in the whole kind of Vakehouse speaker roundup, but I just added into the, into the blog post, the notes there, just the, the top scorers. Um, we, so we, we finished with, with Tuco and uh, Chelman, both on 14. And, and it, was, it was quite something because on... on on that final game, uh, Tuco scored four to go from 10 to 14 goals. Uh, but in the middle of that, Chelman scored one to, to go. So at one stage, he had 14 and Tuco had 13. And so we were quite aware of this kind of top scorer shootout going on while we were on the, in the stand there. But they both ended up on 14, which is a decent a decent return. Um, I think when you, when you look at it historically, I think it, it was up until that last week or two was quite a low scoring um, yeah. season. I think over the, I mean, albeit the formats changed, is now twenty seven games to thirty three. But I mean, in, in some years you were looking at players getting into the sort of the high teens. So um, although on average, I guess fourteen, Tuko played one game less. So really, he should have got the golden boot or the the, the crown. But uh, 
if you're thinking about it, 14 goals from 27 or 26 games isn't a bad return, albeit if they're fully bloated. But uh, yeah, all hail to go. I, I tell you who we should be hailing, really, Rich, after your glowing endorsement midway through the season. Tim Tim Vauranen, who, who managed to pick up place. nine goals in 13 games. So... You know, he was he. If it, if only he'd been there longer, he would have he would have hit that kind of high teens for the across the whole season. Yeah, well, he was top scorer when he was at Honker. I think about 2014, 15. I think he was before he moved on. So, uh, yeah, I um I wasn't sure how well he'd do because I think he'd been mostly warming a bench in Albania before he came back to Finland. But uh, Simo <coughs> has uh, found the key. Um, and uh, and then also on uh, just below that on eight goals were Uro Nisila. Um, Darren Smith, who you mentioned, and also Jake Jervis at Asico, and I think that that for for Saniocchi was quite was quite important that not not only those two, but then on seven goals was Dennis Olinik. So those three across the front for Asico coming in with almost almost thirty goals, which is which is decent decent, and you know. I still hear the name Jake Jervis come up on the AFC Wimbledon podcast, and I've yet to hear a good word said connected to him. But he's been he's been very um, very important part of the team. Um, he's out there on the right wing, and he he put a couple of the balls in for um, Tuco to score in that final game. So not only I don't have the numbers here, but not only coming in with goals, but also also assists and. He's got a contract for next year, so long may that continue. Um, and Rich, you you started to go into to uh, VPS Vasa winning the Ukunen table, um, and Rops Rovaniemi came second, only just just to, just coming above TPS Turku. Uh, so it was Vasa on fifty one points, Rops on forty eight points, and TPS on. 47 points so the way the way the season works is that the second bottom in the Vekos Liga and the second place in the Ukkonen table have a playoff and those playoffs took place over the last over the last week with the first leg Rops 2 Olu 1 and then the return leg finished Olu 2 Rops nil. so that gives Olu a 3-1 Aggregate win and they stay in the Vekas Liga. Um, but I noticed there was a sending off in that second game. Yeah, I didn't see it, but um, it was an early one for Rops. And it's a shame because Rops, when they went down, um, they shared a lot of their squad. And, and the squad that they um, played this season with were, were generally very young. Um, they led the table for most of the season. Um, and then Turku. Um, sort of had a, a very good second half once Kasper Hammerlein and signed for him and they went on a good run. And uh, I think even at one point, Jonathan Johansson, who's the coach, was looking in sort of perilous form. But um, yeah, they ended up coming third. He's signed to do... Well, he's, he's, they've announced he's staying for the next season. But uh, it was a good... It was really close division this year. I mean, you've got big clubs in there who who have been in Bakehouse League in recent years. Um and I think at one point, you know, it was really, really close. I think at one point the, the team down in 10th was only a win or two off the top spot, you know, going into kind of July or August. Uh, and then the three teams that went down, um, was it Clubbies, so Hoyko's reserve or junior team, uh, Musa and... Yippo. Yippo, yeah, yeah. Um, they went, they've gone down to, to Karkonen. But, um, I mean, Ilkonen is... It's quite an amusing league to watch because you've got big clubs there. You've, you've got very much a kind of it's like the English Championship to some point. You've got teams with a, a fairly good history and and kind of aspirations of being back up there against academy sides, teams who've kind of lucked their way up. I mean, I think the teams that are coming up next year, you've got Pargas, um, Yaps, I think f- from Yavanpa and uh, and Asikos Academy side as well. So it's going to be a, a feral mixture in the Ukana next season as well. And obviously now they'll be joined by uh, Kotepe as well. Yeah, coming coming down from Vegas League, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, uh, while, while we're talking about just Vegas League teams, in the, in one of the previous shows, we talked about Hoyiko uh, and their Europa Conference campaign. Um, with now 
Uh, I think they've, pl- they've got two more games to play. So they've played four, they've got two more to play. Do we still call it a campaign? Mark, have you been following the European games? Um, maybe I should just say no. And then it's an easier <laughs> conversation. No, I mean, I, I, you know, I really, I, I thought, like when, when we looked at that, at that group, you know, when, when, when uh, Hoyiko got it, uh, I thought, you know, we might we might just sneak that. That's that's not there's not there's three teams there that you think there's nobody like we dodged, you know, proper Premier League teams or, or like Spurs are in there and Roma are in there and there's a bunch of others and you think, well, we dodged the big boys, so maybe we can. And we dodged all the Swedes and the and the Norwegians that usually give us a hard time or those Icelandic guys that normally knock us out in, in the pre qualifying. So I thought, yeah, I thought we could actually get something from it, but they've been just outclassed you know in in almost it looks like it somehow looks like when they play particularly when they play away that the pitches are just so much bigger because they spend almost all their time sort of trying to chase the uh, chase the ball and it's just it's a combination of sort of the general fitness levels and just the the something like the tactical tactical awareness of the of the opponents that uh, is really costing them but can we call it a campaign it's a money spinning campaign. Mm. I think they'll get they'll yeah. get about three million out of it, which is also Ooh. a shame for Coops. So if they'll finish second. They'll pick up about oh, maybe a hundred k ish, something like that, this year. So they they won't have a lot of cash in the bank. You know, as they go into next year, they'll probably have to make some money on Orvo to to be competitive. But um, yeah, that is yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. a good it's a good point, and and it, and it, it says a lot. If that's how much they win, when you think of how sniffy clubs are from some of the bigger leagues about playing in this Europa Conference, and yet for Hoyuko, that's that's a couple of years playing budget, and for other clubs, that's that's half a decade's worth of playing budget to get that much money in in one go in the Vakehouse League. It makes a big difference. That's why they're able to sign these like current Hukuyat players back to the back to the finish. Top flight. Yeah. Um, well, Cubs made a big loss after the end of the season. I think their their European exploits got them probably half a million euros or something like that. I think they by getting to the playoff round. But um, yeah, that, that's dwarfed by what Hoyuko are getting. And um, and like you say, you know, they're, they're out basically hoovering up all the the best talent they can get ahead of next season to to try and actually stay in the in Europe next season. But I mean, at least. You know, on the silver lining, it's not very often that a team gets knocked out of three European competitions in one season. <sighs> I'd be amazed if that's ever happened before. I mean, probably this season as well. But um, yeah, it's impressive. I don't think it can have happened before because when they were three cup competitions in the past, they weren't connected like this, were no, they? They weren't not, all these not three. I think, yeah, so you get two would be connected. Yeah, but yeah, I'd be surprised. I think this season is the first year it could have happened. So I'm sure there might have been one or two other clubs where it's happened to, but Hoyko have done well. It's, uh, so what you're saying is this is a record, a record setting <laughs> campaign. Yeah, they, I mean they, they they should put those number of stars on the badge as well. Like, <laughs> add it add it to when Aki wins Dancing with the Stars and all that stuff. So, yeah, there you I, go. I, I do think we will have to check because you know there's still games left, uh, and I think that we are Hoyko is one of the first that definitely is definitely already out. So it might, it might actually be the case that it's the, fir- the very first team. Yeah, the first I'll, um, I'll, I'll ask Our, the, Gu- the Guardian have a knowledge thing for all the dweebs to who know all this stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll ask them. Get, it the, get, get the dweebs excited. Go on, yeah. do it. <sighs> well, I think, I reckon for this Vakehaus Liga review... That Keke, Keke, yeah, yes, Keke. Oh, sorry, Keke. I oh, just wanted to, um, as we were talking about earlier, the... Uh, the worst kept secret in Finnish football was mm. confirmed today. I thought you oh, yeah. might. Uh, oh, you've got you've point. got your jersey on, Mark. So um, yeah, what's what's been happening downtown um, Saina Yogi? No, that's that's true. That's a good that's a good point. Thanks for asking. Um, I was getting all carried away and excited about all the other stuff. Um, yeah, it was announced today that that Joaquin Gomez is the new ASU core manager. As we say, the the worst kept secret in football. I think, in fairness to him. Um, he he never got involved in all the all the tittle tattle that we were speculating on a couple of months ago. He just wanted to keep his head down and uh, and and kind of get on with the job at Hoy Fcor, and he did a decent job there. Certainly uh, did. Yeah, and and been announced today, and and sent a a nice message to the to the supporters, um, just saying that you know proud of the opportunity. 
going to work hard, going to, you know, all, all the sort of things you'd expect to hear, but still nice to, nice to hear it. Um, and I don't know, it's a gamble, isn't it? Like, like, Hoy Efko had a good had a good season. He did a good job there. That was his first season as a manager in his own right. Now he's coming back to the house of fun uh, with a two two years plus one contract. Um, so I guess we'll be deciding in the middle of the 2023 season if he's done well enough that year to get another another year. It's all I, I don't know. I'm joking, obviously, but you know you can you can almost see history repeating itself again. Um, There's a lot of pressure on Asiko now. Yeah, I think having yeah. having done what they did with Honkavar, and and you know in hindsight they they end up coming third, but um, getting rid of him. Uh, getting in, bringing in their old assistant to come back and, and rejuvenate. And they'll, I imagine Asiko will be quite active in the transfer market as they usually are as well. Um, you know, there's, there's money there, but there's also pressure from the, the president who, you know, now they're back in Europe for the first time in what, three, four years? Uh, yeah, at least yeah. four, I would say. Yeah. So um, I, 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 they've, they've I agree. Got a lot of pressure I agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and un, untested. Good guy. Clearly, is is a decent manager. He's young, um, and and not only is is this kind of is there the pressure to be at the top of the Bakehouse Liga, but there's a European campaign. Asti Kour have had three. This or oh, this will be the third one they've had, I think. So, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot there. But you know, good luck, Kinney. We're um, we're behind you, and uh, I'll see you soon for that beer. And we got um, also leaves a, another couple of clubs. Looking for managers, so uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. Wait and see if there's any rumours coming out about who um, who might take up those berths. What's the old merry-go-round, isn't it? Because in, Inter have named a new coach, who I think used to be the manager of like Levante's reserves and was a technical coach at Valencia, I think, at one point. Um, yeah, there's a couple of changes of moot. I think there's a who knows where, and who knows will go to Hoy, of course. So. Maybe Hong yeah. Kavar will go back and uh, yeah. complete the circle. <laughs> and, and anyone that's interested in where Joaquin Gomez has come from, we did we did a, an episode uh, in conversation with way way back at the start of the um, start of twenty twenty one, where we sort of talked through his career, and it's quite it's quite interesting his his move from from being a player in in Spain and and deciding that coaching was the right route through the clubs that he he sort of worked at in the UK before coming over to Finland this uh, is it's worth a listen so so check it out um but I reckon if it's okay with everyone else time to to blow that final whistle and we haven't we haven't actually got a following here but I thought maybe as our full-time thing for this episode we should talk about the fact that the Finnish football show team are all going to be together in the same place next week for the Finland versus France game and invite any of our listeners that are there in Helsinki on that day to, to follow us, uh, come and find us and follow us as we march up to the stadium with all the other um, members of the Assam Yiko. Um, so we're, this is Tuesday the 16th. 16th, 16th. sorry. Um We've been planning this so long and now I forget the date. Um, we're, we're going to be meeting in Henry's Pub, which is uh, opposite the Campi Shopping Centre. We're aiming to get there for 6pm. And then we understand that the, the march to the stadium normally leaves about an hour and a half before kickoff. So we're imagining we're going to leave there just after eight. But if you want to come along, uh, come and say hi, uh, come and have a drink with us and... And, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll record some stuff. I'll have my recorder with me and we can record some bits and pieces out while we're out and about as well and uh, and, and bring that to you afterwards. Um, Keke, you've done this kind of this kind of home games before. What can we expect? Oh, a few beers, a bit of singing, nice, uh, hopefully some uh, some smoke and fireworks and, yeah, and a good result for Finland. And then we'll be getting together the morning after to to review the game and uh, and see who's got the sorest head. Not too early. No, not too early. That's right. Mor- morning meaning like before twelve. Oh yeah, that's my okay. checkout time as well. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, then for this episode of the Finnish football show, I think it's time to say goodbye. Keep your keep your 
subscribe to the 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 show wherever you're listening or watching because there's going to be another episode coming along pretty quickly uh, where we preview the the two upcoming games for the hooky ad so you can hear what we think about that very soon um but until then uh keke thanks for joining kiddos mike rich good to see you thanks a lot kiddos and mark thanks a lot look at legenda see you the next episode thanks a lot bye bye bye